Tiff, you wanted to talk about your book briefly and what you see uh, happening uh, now. Well, Unless yeah. Are there, I, I just, are, there, are there any questions for me? I'm come uh, back to it. I'm just, just to follow on what you were saying, I think uh, just an observation. It's interesting. Uh, now we have big Chinese companies doing business around the world that are bending over backwards to say that they're independent of the Chinese government and therefore the data that, that they may have will not be shared with uh, security authorities or others in the Chinese government. Um, as a long time jur a business journalist in China going back to the mid 90s, uh, I find that ironic because uh, the, uh, what Chinese companies used to always do is brag about their government connections and that could be a good thing for uh, a, a foreign company coming into China. You wanted a, a company that had good connections, that had ready access, therefore, to, to state capital, that per, might have a guaranteed market share in many cases um, because of that state connection. Um, I think today, you know, now we're seeing them, all these various companies uh, from WeChat to TikTok and so on, ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, claim that they do not have uh, Huawei even, claiming that. We, we saw the, the chairman, Ren Zhengfei, swearing that he would never hand over data to the Chinese government. Well, that's absurd that, that they would actually even say that because what the law says in China is they're obligated to hand over that data. Uh, the latest news we have, I think it was a Wall Street Journal report, shows that TikTok was uh, circumventing uh, something in the uh, uh, a security protection system in the Google Android operating system and gathering data that they weren't supposed to be gathering. And uh, also that they were sharing that, not surprisingly, with the parent company, ByteDance. Well, ByteDance, according to, I think it's a 2017 law in China, is required by law to share that data with the government if they request it. Um, and um, I just uh, another note on sort of the role of the company in China today. I, I would say, and I argue this in my book, The Myth of Chinese Capitalism, that uh, any self-respecting company that wants to succeed in China today, and as they reach a certain scale in their operations, they have to uh, be just as concerned about uh, making sure that their uh, strategy meshes with that of the broad goals of the Communist Party of China as they do about making money. And we've seen that with Alibaba, we've seen that, the list goes on, certainly with Huawei. Um, so, so anyway, I just find that interesting. And I think the idea that they can tell their shareholders and their consumers around the world that they will promise to protect the data, it's not how it works in China. It's not going to happen. So, what are the implications of the fact that Xi Jinping inserted Communist Party committees into Alibaba and other allegedly private sector companies? Does that, does that affect, give the Communist Party control over those entities? Certainly it does. And I mean, Xi Jinping is very open about the fact that he wants more, control, more state control or actually more party control with the party obviously uh, ruling the state in China um, over, uh, over big, big corporations that are important. And he said that very openly. I mean, he, he literally said a couple years ago, um, in effect, uh, you have one role, which is making money. You have an equally important role, which is, quote unquote, to love the party. And that's the way he put it. And um, so, yeah, he uses things like uh, strengthening party committees in companies as a way, of course, to have to uh, have a stronger party role in the decision making processes and management of these companies. We've seen a real shift under Xi Jinping towards reasserting the role of the party throughout the economy. And of course, would it work? A, a CEO of Alibaba or a CEO of Tencent would say, here's something we want to do commercially in the world. And would, would the party committee within the company then come to him or her and say, that's not a good idea. If the party doesn't agree with you. Would it be that obvious or that crude? Uh, certainly it could be. I mean, it, it would depend on the, on the situation. Um, and then the... Uh, you know, the founder of the company is the is often the real power, but they know that in order to continue to grow and reach a certain size, and it's becoming more so today in China, they need to ensure that their broad strategic roles mesh with that of the Communist Party. I just say really quickly, I mean, I remember year, speaking of Alibaba years ago, um, I was on a reporting trip in Xinjiang. It was long enough ago that it was a slightly 
a, 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 to the, the human rights tragedy now unfolding there was not quite as apparent at that point. Um, I was uh, at a, staying in a hotel and everyone told me, you know who was the big guest last night? Well, it was Jack Ma of Alibaba. He was there to announce a push into specifically Southern Xinjiang. And the, the goal was he was going to help the uh, rural, uh, mainly rural economy in Southern Xinjiang find a market through e-commerce for their goods. Well, there was a reason he was there. Southern Xinjiang is the most, it's been the most Muslim part of, of Xinjiang. It has the highest density of Uyghur people. And it was the place that the Chinese government perceived as uh, being a threat to stability. And so Jack Ma, I, I don't believe that he saw a great business opportunity there. I think he knew and someone probably told him that it was time to make a major push into Southern Xinjiang. Wow.